All right, I really want to get excited about this plane. It's going to be big, loud, and filled with polite professionals. And doesn't that sound every bit like Canada? Oh, sorry. The Canadian Armed Forces responds to over 9,000 calls for rescue each year. And at the heart of these operations are about 140 search and rescue technicians. These individuals encompass the most specialized rescue experts we have at our disposal. Committed to their craft, they launch air assets in as many as 1,000 operations annually and are responsible for saving the lives of thousands of Canadians each year. When we're out getting lost with nature, these men and women will find us. So it was most unfortunate when I heard that their fleet of new toy planes will not be ready to fly this summer as planned. Completion of this project has been delayed for a second time. I know, close your mouth. The C-295 fixed-wing aircraft was intended to replace the C-130 Hercules and the similar Buffalo search and rescue planes which were aged out earlier this year. Despite the Buffalo already undergoing a life extension program, there was no choice but to remove the airframe from service as it was no longer considered a safe or effective option and can anyone else feel a pain growing in the back of their head? All right, hold on. I also come with some good news. The C-295 is renewing deliveries to Canada. And so there's plenty of reason to dive into this latest addition to the fixed wing search and rescue program. The C-295 will lovingly adopt the name of King Fisher, a clever moniker taken from the common North American bird, which can be found hunting for its prey along our streams and shorelines. So it's a pretty fitting name. In what had been described as a torturous 14-year acquisition process, the European company Airbus was finally awarded the $2.4 billion contract way back in 2016. This contract detailed the building of 16 aircraft. This deal includes 11 years of in-service support, which already began counting down in 2016. It also gives us the option to tack on a further 15 years of service for an additional 2.3 billion. And yeah, let's not make this a house of lies. We will still be using them by then. Let's look at a picture book. For reference, the Buffalo airframe was in service for 55 years. The Kingfisher is being built in sunny Spain, and initially we expected to have all of our planes by midpoint 2022. However, due to production woes and the flu that will not be mentioned, Canada has only taken possession of four aircraft. Now, this original schedule was labeled as extremely ambitious, and those are just two words that have never had a great relationship with Canadian procurement. The revised timeline for final delivery will now be 2024. So then, it's a good thing that Canadian air crews haven't been sitting idly by and have instead been using this time to play on a Kingfisher aircraft maintenance trainer that arrived several years ago. This near identical training plane is considered an additional asset to the fleet and has since made its home in Comox, British Columbia, where the search and rescue center of excellence can be found. In Comox, a brand spanking new training facility was built to allow both crew and maintainers from across the country to work through various flight simulators, while also getting a feel for how the aircraft handles. Defined as a twin-engine, medium-range, multi-purpose transport, the Kingfisher will have the ability to fly however it wants, low and slow over rough terrain, or at its max ceiling of over 7,600 meters. Better design efficiency will allow the Kingfisher to reach a maximum range of 4,500 kilometers and a cruising speed of 452 kilometers an hour, putting its predecessor to shame. This means that our new bird of prey is capable of responding quickly across our vast and challenging geography. Here in the land of Syrup and Drake, there is approximately 18 million kilometers square that we have declared search and rescue responsibility for. In order to cover this much area, the Kingfishers will need to be spread out among the four southern bases where we deploy our search and rescue capabilities from. Now on board the King, you will find a modern array of sensors that will reduce the on-scene search time it takes to cover any particular area. These include a next generation integrated tactical system that comes with several very nice 24 inch displays. These can overlay weather and radar information. Don't like the weather? Switch to something else like the electro, optical and infrared system, their surveillance radar and more. This new avionics suite is operated through many more onboard touchscreen displays, and this system will enhance the crew's ability to cover more grid squares to make locating its targets just that much quicker. 
Beside effortlessly working in low light and bad weather conditions, the King's modern human-machine interface will include night vision goggle capability, and the new generators will provide 50% more electrical power to these critical systems. This shiny new tech will have the incredible ability to spot missing people or objects at more than 40 kilometers away, so maybe we can fly it over Spain to locate the other planes we paid for. The minimum operating crew is six personnel, to include two pilots, two SAR techs, one air combat systems officer, and one flight engineer. When operating in this configuration, the King is designed to store a wealth of mission critical equipment for those rescue operations. Otherwise, it can be reconfigured into its maximum party bus capacity of 36 people. When a rescued patient is brought on board, seamless lighting and an integrated wireless communication system will make those medical tasks that much easier. It's pretty clear that a lot of love went into this design. In fact, close to 1 million man hours of engineering went into developing the search and rescue version of this airframe, and it shows inside and out. Increased range, reduced fuel consumption, addition of winglets, which are those fancy curves on the end of the wings, and much more have gone into this baby. The design team were also very excited to have achieved the full enclosure of the landing gear, allowing for a significant reduction in drag. Even with these improvements, certain technical concerns remain in the final design, one involving the center of gravity in the standard cabin configuration, and another that might compromise the safety of the SAR technicians when they want to parachute from the plane's back ramp. Bunch of show-offs. The Royal Canadian Air Force and those involved with the program are aware of these issues and are working on solutions, but at this point, the military can't say when these aircraft will be available for missions. With an estimated life expectancy of 30 years, I'd say we need to get going sooner rather than later. In the meantime, the military will do what it does best, adapt. Hercules aircraft out of Winnipeg and Cormorant helicopters will be made available in the meantime. Yet, it hasn't gone unnoticed that the responding Hercules will need to fly considerable distances when dispatched, putting those calling for help at increased risk. For our search and rescue technicians who are patiently waiting, it's all too clear that fixed wing aircraft are essential to Canada's emergency response. Thanks for watching. Most unfortunate, Captain. Why must you turn my office into a house of lies?